Hi, uh, welcome everyone to the Trading More Live webinar. Thank you for coming. And as usual, I'm just checking the sound and if the sound is all okay. Yes, it's okay. Uh, I'm just going to um, quickly summarize what we have been covering over the past weeks and what's uh, going to be covered today. So today, just like in the last two weeks, we have had Victor, a Minister of Trade and Educator with us, who has uh, been holding a three-part webinar series. And we call this the 2016 Year and Volatility Webinars. Um, in the webinar two weeks ago, we've covered um, the Trump presidency and its implications on the stocks and US dollar. Last week, Victor presented one of his new trading strategies. And today he'll um, show you how to uh, trade uh, with trend lines. Uh, he's been trading the market since 2003 and he's active in the FX and commodities space, but his true passion is options. If you'd like to find out how he trades, just visit the links in the description. Um, you'll find um, five, six um, trading courses from him on our course platform. This webinar was brought to you by Trade360, the crowd trading broker. Uh, Trade360 has revolutionized the concept of online trading with the introduction of crowd trading, a unique technologically advanced approach to trading of currency pairs, commodities, stocks, CFDs, and indices. Uh, currently, Trade360 offers up to $5,000 deposit bonus for first-time depositors. For more information and to open an account, just click the link again in the description below. And uh, now without further delay, um, I'd like to um, introduce Victor in the Trading More Life webinar. Victor, please start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for joining this webinar. And first, let me introduce myself. As Peter said, my name is Victor Nostroyev. I am an option trader and a commodity market analyst. And uh, you may know that I prefer trading options on agricultural commodity futures. Uh, because I consider these markets to be more transparent than any other markets. In commodity markets, almost everything depends on supply and demand factors. And if you, if you know how to analyze them, you will definitely succeed. And this is my third webinar on Tradema, the last one in series. And today we will be speaking about trends and trend lines. I'm going to show you a strict procedure how to draw a trend line. It has been long known that every trader draws a trend line in his own way. But I will teach you a formal procedure and uh, you will have no doubts whether you draw something wrong or not. What else I prepared for you on this webinar? I'm going to reveal one of my strategies that I used when traded Forex. And in this strategy, you don't need to use a trend line. Uh, we will recognize the trend using moving averages. And at the, at the end of this webinar, I will tell you how to keep your brain straight and how to improve your trading and analytical skills. Okay, let's start. And uh, first I'm going to tell you what trend is in general. And uh, when we can say that trend exists on the market. Just uh, quickly, let me interrupt you. Um, um, your, sh your screen is not shared yet. I don't know if you're planning to share it at this stage. Yeah, no, I'm going to share oh, it. Thank you. Okay, I believe now you see that. Uh, a trend is a general direction of a market or of the price of an asset. And uh, trends can vary in length from short term to intermediate and to long term. And uh, of course, you may know that uh, as a general strategy, it is best to trade with trends. It means that if the general trend of the market is headed up, 
uh, you should be very cautious about taking any positions which are opposite to the general trend. Okay, uh, well, now let's discuss trend lines. Uh, a tool that traders use to identify a trend in every market is a trend line. And uh, a trend line is a line which is drawn between high and low point for an asset over a period of time. If the asset price goes up from 10 to 20 to 30 over a three year period, the analyst can plot the line from 1 to 30, starting in year 1 and ending in year 3. The first year marks the first plot in the series. It is the baseline price of 10. The second year represents the beginning of the trend at 20. And the third year marks the continuation, or possibly the end of the trend at 30. So in this way, trend lines can be used to predict the next data point along the trend or to look for a reversal of the trend. Trend lines can also be used to form a channel marked by two lines. As you can see it here, one line is created by trends in the highs, and another line is created with trends in the lows. Oh, something like this. Uh, it's uh, DAX 30. Um, this is a German stock index. And uh, here you can see M15 time frame. OK, and now I would like to show you how I draw a trend line. This is a formal procedure. I'll show you everything step by step. Okay, let's start. Um, okay, for example, I want to analyze this period, and uh, it's a crude oil a daily chart. Uh, what we should do first? The first step is to define the beginning of upside movement and to define the first minimum. Here it is. Uh, if, uh, we find the minimum if we see an uptrend. And we find the maximum if we see a downtrend. So in our case, we should find the minimum. It will be a start point of short-term upside trend. Now, let's define the highest maximum. It's here. The third step is to find uh, another minimum just behind this maximum. It's here, this one. And now we can draw a trend line using these two minimums. This one and this one. Uh, but pay attention, please. A trend line can't cross the price between these two, between this and this point. But now we see that it crosses. Uh, that's why we must adjust it. In this case, when price is crossed, uh, we need to use only the second minimum. So I mean this one. 
and find another minimum instead of this one. For example, we should take the next one. This is how we do it. Now it's okay. We don't see that the price crosses the trend line. Now it's perfect. Let me take another chart. Okay, for example, we are going to analyze this period. This is uh, the begin. This is this is the starting point of the uptrend. So it will be the first minimum. This is the highest maximum, and we should find uh, the minimum behind it. Here it is. Okay, this is our withdrawal trend line. But now we see that the price here and here crosses the trend line. That's why we need to adjust it. We need to use another minimum. Now it works. Let me show another one. Uh, this is uh, a British pound against Australian dollar, uh, H4 time frame, and uh, we also see an, up an uptrend here. This is the beginning. This point is a start point of an uptrend. Here is the maximum, and this is minimum behind this maximum. So we should connect these two points. But now we see that price crosses the trend line many times. We should adjust it. Okay, what if we use the second minimum? It still crosses. Let's take another one. Now it's okay. This is how uh, we should do it. Okay, another example. American dollar against Japanese yen. And uh, you may see that trend line is drawn here. So how we should do it? We should, okay, let me do it. Uh, uh, this is the beginning of an uptrend. Uh, this is the highest maximum, and this is this one. It's a local minimum behind the maximum. We use these two minimums to draw it right by, and it's, now it works. Okay. Uh, now let's repeat this procedure for downtrend. Okay, we see a downtrend this period. It's a daily chart of gold. This is uh, the beginning, uh, the start point of the uh, downtrend. Uh, this is uh, the lowest minimum. And this point is um, the maximum behind the lowest minimum. We should draw a trend line this way. First we use this point and then another point. Now you see that uh, 
at at least candle so, uh, the price crosses the line that's why we need to adjust it and use this maximum now it's drawn correctly another example uh it's euro against british pound h4 time frame uh it can be the highest uh, maximum so it's a beginning of a downtrend and this is the lowest minimum okay and The maximum behind the previous, uh, the lowest minimum is here. So we need to connect this maximum and this one. Not this, not the next. Okay. okay, but you see that the price crosses. If we use the next maximum, then it looks perfect. Moreover, we have at least uh, two more points on this trend line. Uh, for example, what if we choose uh, another time frame, H8? Actually, it's not popular, but we can try. It's not what uh, every trader uses. This is the minimum. This is uh, the previous ma maximum behind the minimum. And it actually at the beginning of downtrend is here. But now you see that the price crosses the line. That's why we need uh, to find another minimum, or I mean, to find another maximum. Okay, here it is. Now it's drawn perfectly. Okay, and what about uh, H1 time frame? Okay, it's still in a downtrend, but it seems that uh, the trend is going to change in soon. Okay, uh, but let's try to draw a trend line. Uh, this is the starting point of a downtrend, and this is the lowest minimum. So we should find a maximum behind this minimum. It's here. Now we connect these two points, and uh, this is how we draw a trend line. Uh, and you see that trend line here is broken. Uh, so, um, if you are looking for a trend change, then you should monitor this market. Okay, and another example, another two examples, because um, I want to show you a core market with which I, uh, which I like most. For example, H4 time frame, and this is a downtrend. This is uh, the lowest minimum, and this is the beginning of downtrend. Uh, this point is uh, the previous maximum behind the lowest minimum. So we connect these two points here. Uh, but the price uh, crosses the trend line between these two points, and we need to redraw it. Maybe here, uh, or to be more exactly, we should use this 
uh, this maximum. Now it's perfect. Okay, another uh, another example is your USD. This is uh, the minimum, uh, the lowest minimum. Here is the previous one. And this is the beginning of downtrend. So we, so we need to uh, connect them. This is how we should draw a trend line. And again, it was broken. So maybe we should um, think about trend change in this market. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you in, our, in the next part of this webinar. I will describe you a three-step method. This three-step method will help you to avoid losing trades and um, also to find great trading opportunities. It correctly predicts a trend change from 60 to 80 percent of the time. So the three steps are here. A trend line is broken. And the second one is that there is a retest and a failure. And the third one is that price falls below the prior low if we are speaking for an uptrend. So these three steps define a market that has moved from an uptrend to a downtrend. Okay, let me show you on the chart. Okay, for example, we will use uh, American dollar against Canadian. This is H4 time frame. And for example, we decided uh, to analyze this period and we see um, um, the beginning of an uptrend, the highest maximum, and the minimum behind it. We connect these two points. And now we see a trend line. Okay, here the trend line was broke. And uh, it was two attempts to retest the previous high. This one, the highest point. And both of them failed. And then the price fell below the prior low. This is the prior low, and this is uh, a moment when price fell below it. Then it fell again. So that's why uh, we see that the change trend in this market, and now we should uh, draw another trend line. Let me do it. This is the lowest minimum, and this is the beginning of the downtrend, I think. So this is how we should connect them. Then you better use another maximum. This one, yeah. Now it works. This is a, another trend line which defines the downtrend. It was an example when um, uh, an uptrend changed to a downtrend. I have another example. Um, this is Palladium and uh, H1 time frame. Uh, and again, we see an uptrend. We draw a trend line. But what happened next? Then we see that the trend line was broken and the price fell. Uh, there was an attempt to 
retest the previous high, but it was uh, it wasn't successful. So then the price dropped, uh, and it dropped below that prior low, so below this level. That's why the trend changed. Uh, it's H1 time frame, and uh, we are speaking about short term trade, uh, short term trends. This is the lowest point. This is the previous uh, maximum, and uh, it can be the beginning of a downtrend. So we need to connect them. That's the price process. The trend line, and we need to adjust. Maybe this way. So this is another trend line, and uh, now you see that uh, this the second trend line is also broken, and uh, then we should monitor the market uh, for the retest of the previous low. Maybe it was a retest, and uh, uh, maybe in the, the next uh, eight to ten hours we will see an uptrend in this market. Uh, and now I'm going to demonstrate you how trend changes from a downtrend to an uptrend. Now we will choose uh, stock market. Uh, we will analyze Walt Disney stock, and it will be H4 time frame. Okay. Uh, in this analyzed period, we see that it was a downtrend, and this is how we draw a trend line. Then it was crossed. Uh, then we see that it was the, uh, an attempt to retest the previous low, so this low, and it failed. But then price. It was higher than previous maximum, and it means that the trend changed. So now it's an uptrend. Let me draw another trend line. This is how we do it, but of course, we need to adjust it because uh, the price process this trend line so maybe maybe this way no no not this this way Okay, and now I'm going to show you another interesting example. It will be American dollar against Swiss franc. Uh, it's a daily chart. Okay. It was a downtrend here. Yeah, it was here. So this is a uh, 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 the low minimum. This is the previous high. And this is the beginning of an uptrend. Okay. We draw a trend line. Uh, the price crosses it. So we need to adjust it. Now it's okay, but we see that the price. Uh, the, 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 and now we see that trend line was broke. Uh, okay, what else? Now, uh, then uh, there was an attempt to retest this low, and it was um, and it failed. Mm, and uh, but. Uh, 
only a few days later we see that uh, the market was higher than previous low or the previous previous high that we should um, use to compare to this price. Okay, so only at the end of October we see that uh, the trend changed. Okay, um, so I think that uh, now we are finished with trend lines and now I'm going to show you another way how to recognize the moment when trend occurs. So you're going to learn about the strategy which I used to use uh, when I traded Forex. Uh, I wouldn't say that this strategy contains a secret indicator. Everything is available to everybody, but I've combined some simple indicators, found best markets for this strategy, and adjusted all input parameters. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about the strategy that I called Rainbow. Uh, here is an example, but I'm going to switch to our chat uh, on the Trade360 website, and uh, I will uh, I will demonstrate you everything there. So uh, you may open your trading platform that you are used to, or you can just uh, open the chat to get the signals. So let's open the chat. This strategy can be applied in any time frame, but I recommend you to use M15 and Euro USD. Of course, you can also use this strategy on uh, for British pound against American dollar or Australian dollar against against American. But uh, I don't recommend to trade cross courses with this strategy. So let's go back to our chart. Um, uh, what you should do first, you should set five moving average indicators with uh, different periods. Uh, five, 14, 21, 65, and 120. All of them should be using open prices and be based on the exponential model. So I'm going to do it right now. First one uh, will be red. The second one, uh, the period is fourteen, and uh, we will choose orange color. The third one, uh, the period is 21, uh, yellow, the fourth one. Uh, 65 and it will be green ok 
ce something something will happen with my uh, with one of my uh, moving averages which one Uh, with a 14 period. Okay, 14. Yeah. No, not yellow, orange. Okay. And the last one. Uh, the period is um, 120. It will be blue. Okay, now you see it. I also recommend using stochastic oscillator as an additional indicator to filter signals. Uh, let me add it to this chart. Stochastic flow. And uh, parameters should be five. Nine and three. Okay, uh, to get to, to get a trading signal, you ought to be sure of five rules, and uh, let me show you all of them. The first one, uh, all five moving averages were in a very low range, five to 10 pips for at least three, four hours. It means that this market was flat. I'll show it to you. For example, here it is, this period. For example, this period. Um, and uh, you may know that the common rule tells that flat market follows each trend and every trend ends with a flat market. Uh, thus, you have to find a point when the last trend ended. So this is the point when the last trend ended. It. And now it's time for new trend. Uh, you can see that it happened in this dedicated area. The second rule is that all moving averages should be located in the right order. So if you are waiting for an uptrend, then a uh, red one should be higher than orange, orange higher than yellow, yellow higher than green, and green higher than blue. The third one is that if, if we are waiting for an uptrend, Stochastic with parameters 5, 9, and 3 should demonstrate a local low in the same time when all moving averages are in a tight range. For example, here. This is the local low when all moving averages are in a tight range.
Okay, to give the signal, uh, the distance between a red line and the blue one should be three times as high as it was during the period of consolidation. So uh, we will get a signal here. So for example, you can uh, buy here and then you will close the trade uh, using your stochastic here. And it will help you to earn at least mm, 22 or 25 pips. Okay, and actually there is a fifth rule in this um, uh, trading system. This rainbow should be widening on two different charts. For example, Euro USD and British Pound USD. Or for example, um, Australian dollar against American and New Zealand against American. Uh, what else? It's crucial to choose the right timing for opening the trade. The best time is when two sessions cross. For example, Asian and European. Or European and American. Usually, forex market moves during these periods. I believe that accurate using of this strategy will certainly bring you profit. But please don't violate any of these rules. Please be accurate. Mm, what else? Uh, actually, now I will give you a special advice how to keep your brains well trained. I will be speaking about chess. Uh, do you know that chess players are successful traders? Um, no one has ever collected statistics, but based on my own experience, I can affirm that. I know many cases when people who are good at chess became successful traders. And moreover, you apply for, when, when you apply for a trader job, interviewer may ask if you're a chess player or how good you are in mathematics. Why? Because traders and chess players possess the same skills. Uh, let me explain it to you. There are three things about chess you should know. First, playing chess keeps you concentrated. Uh, common things happen on the market. When you need to make a decision to enter or exit the market, you should be totally focused on it. Uh, why? Because your profit loss depends on your current decision, whether to stay or to take any actions. And you can make a right decision only in case if you're fo focused on it. The next thing is that playing chess teaches you to predict a known situation. As a chess player, I can tell you that it's impossible to predict every move of the opening. But if you're a strong player, you can predict most of them. Not all, but most of them. The same thing occurs on the market. You have to consider how to react if different market scenarios realize. Uh, what if price goes down or up? Or what if it's flat? And the third thing is that learning chess can distract you from your routine. And when you come back to the markets, you will analyze these markets from the other side, from another angle. This always happens to me when I have to make an important trading decision. I often try to play chess or solve puzzles. And only after that, I come back to the market. Uh, from my own experience, I can say that this is a very helpful method. If 
if you know uh, how to play chess, then I highly recommend you to play from time to time. Uh, you can use any of the popular chess websites you know. If you don't want to play against human, you may play against a computer. Or you can just try to solve a few, a few, few puzzles. It also helps. Uh, okay, um, actually, thank you for your attention. And uh, it was all I wanted to tell you at this webinar. And if you want to know more, you can contact me. Uh, if you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask them right now. I will answer. There is actually a question asking um, whether to um, use shadow to draw trend line. I'm not sure if uh, if you answered that question. Um, no, I didn't answer. But okay, let me. Uh, let me do it right now. For example, I will open a new chat maybe here. Yes, exactly. We should use a shadow uh, because um, it all depends on time frame. For example, if we use um, H1, then there will be no shadow. It will be a shadow only on daily time frame. And um, uh, so we use trend line. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why we use trend line because uh, we need to find the moment when uh, this line was broken, and how. And uh, we need to find the moment when trend changes. And uh, sometimes um, uh, we see that the price breaks the support and resistance levels also. So uh, if we use shadows to, to draw a support or resistance level, why not to use them to draw a trend line? It's the same, I think. Uh, are there any more questions? Um, not from the audience. So basically, you say that sh um, shadows should always be included. And what about when they're like like extreme, um, like a news announcement, and and uh, like visually, um, visually it's more compelling to just use um, just use the bodies because there's they're such an outlier wick. I don't know if if you're able to find any example. Uh, yeah, I will be usually it's, around. You know, like elections, there sometimes yeah. you know, NFP is there's such a such a week, and some somebody just can say like, "Well, this, you know, the, the whole price action is in a beautiful channel. If only that that massive week wasn't there, and I have no idea what to do with it. Uh, is my my channel still valid? I don't know if if it makes sense to you or for the audience. Um, um, I have come across this situation. Many times. Oh, th there is one actually. Yeah, there is one. The, the day of election in the United States. Um, actually, uh, I prefer not to trade uh, during such a days because um, it's very hard to predict the market. For example, I consider it uh, that Clinton should uh, win, but we see that Trump will be American president. And that's why the re market reaction is uh, is so. Uh, so as for me, you should uh, stick to the formal procedure and uh, use the shadow, even if it's uh, if it's violate your channel or anything. Because uh, yeah, maybe you will get a a loss at this moment, but. Uh, you'd better to stick the procedure because next time it will bring you profit. Uh, so you, it will be hard for you to identify whether to use this shadow or not. And uh, for example, this one, it lasts uh, not only for one minute; it lasts for many hours. And if we move to, if we switch to H1 time frame, ah, no, actually this chart won't. Ah, here it is. There's, it was four hours when the price rose. Uh, four hours in a row for the four candles. One, two, there it is. So that's why I think 
we should use it. It's uh, in H1. It's not a shadow. Um, if may, maybe sometimes, for example, when we speak about something like non-farm payrolls, and we see that it was a just a spike, maybe in one minute, and then it, um, and then the the market became calm, or the price just was in a tight range. Then we can ignore it. Uh, but anyway, I recommend you to. I still recommend you to stick uh, stick to your formal procedure that you use every time. Don't violate any of this rule because it will lead to a loss. Okay, fair enough. Um, thank you, Victor. Um, the webinar meant to be like uh, about um, 40, 45 minutes plus a little bit of Q and A and now we're past 50 minutes. Um, so thank you again for the presentation and I hope that everybody uh, found uh, great value in it. Uh, this was the last webinar of the 2016 year end volatility webinar series. And for future webinars, um, please watch out for our, our uh, announcements. Again, this um, webinar was uh, brought to you by Trade360, the crowd trading broker they currently offer up to five thousand dollar deposit bonus for first time depositors and um, thank you again for coming and we hope to see you in our next session thank you bye-bye okay thank you bye